Jesus Christ. Many probably heard me blowing the shofar and were thinking, what is this? But the Bible declares, being a Sunday today, we want to bring you the good news. The good news out of the building into the streets for those who probably didn't have the opportunity to hear about the Lord Jesus. Some of us probably never knew about him. But you see, there's coming a day where you will stand before your maker to make accounts for what you did in your body you will make accounts for the things you rejected the knowledge you rejected and today i come bearing good news many have heard john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son many probably have heard john 10 10 the lord cometh not to steal, to kill like the thief, but he comes to give life and life abundantly. Maybe you've also heard that there is Jehovah, the healer, the one he heals. You see, you cannot tell me you don't know about Jesus if you celebrate Christmas. You cannot say you've never heard about Jesus if you celebrate things like Easter, which basically has no historical ties to the Messiah because these were man-made feasts in order to bring in their own agenda you see religion has a way of ensnaring many but we know that Jesus' birth was not on December 25th but somewhere in September October but this is not what brings salvation what bears salvation people of Southampton or people of South End is that you will have faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth and today I come not to ensnare you with the things of this world that I come to bring you closer to God. You see, for God so loved the world that he sent his son. When God loved the world, he didn't build church buildings or mosques or, or synagogues or temples, but he came to give us himself. You see, the revelation of the one true God and his son whom he has sent is the Yeshua HaMashiach. And today his assignment was not only in a prophetic sense, but it was in a plan to save humanity from their sins. And that is why without salvation, we'll all be damned and be found in the lake of fire. But today by the hearing of the gospel, your faith can increase. And then you can come to know the one true God and his son whom he has sent. And so today I come telling you that there is a day that the Lord has a portion where he judges the world of right of unrighteousness. And he says, this is what the Lord, this is good news, that the days of your ignorance he wins. Acts 17, 30. He wins, he turned a blind eye. You see, the things we did or the things we do could have made God destroy us. And today he's given us his breath. 
the Bible says this is another good news that he makes the, uh, he, he makes the light shine both on the wicked and the righteous that is the grace of God that today you get to breathe free air which you're not paying you see the last time I checked 2,000 years ago people were looking for ventilators so they could be they could breathe again and live again but you see the ventilators could not give you salvation it was by grace when God gives you his breath the moment a man's soul departs from his body he's physically dead but you know what the Bible declares that we're dead in our trespasses and sins we're in the body but we're disconnected from the Creator but you see for man loves darkness rather than light they've turned the glory of the incorruptible God the God who is blessed forever into rocks chakras and stones we put our faith in creation than in the Creator so we have bees and bracelets and we have different colors of bees and we place our salvation on rocks some place their salvation in prayers and, 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 and principle yoga practices and Buddhism but you see the last time I checked those rocks that we place our hope in did not shed the blood for us some put our faith in in the sun we put our faith in the moon we put our faith in creation but not in the creator and because of that except we repent we will likewise perish in our knowledge and our faith in rocks and chakras hallelujah and that is why today god is telling some and repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand somebody will say that i'm judgmental but i'm not condemning because there's a difference between condemnation and judgment condemnation means there is no door or an opportunity to escape from the wrath of god but when we come bearing the good news the gospel is a revelation of god of his love of his plan to redeem you from the wrath to come and so today people of south end we come preaching jesus christ I did not come telling you the name of my church building or where I fellowship, but I come to tell you of the one true God and His Son whom He has sent for us 2,000 years ago. You see, this same Jesus that died and rose from the grave will be coming again. And that is why we blow the shofar to remind you the same Jesus that you've tied your Christmas festivity to is coming again, not as a baby in a manger, but as a king and as a roaring lion and he's not coming to cry like a baby he's not coming to feed the poor he's not coming to heal the sick but he's coming to destroy everything that is anti-christ and today when he comes will you be in christ or will you be outside the bible declares that there is no condemnation for those that are in christ that means those who are in Christ are insulated from the condemnation that is to come. Those who are in Christ, though they will be in crisis, they will be insulated from the effects of the crisis and will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and not perish. And you see, that is why Jesus said, with all the things that we tie ourselves to, many have power, many have money, many have things and all these things that we pursue the money the wealth the political influence the 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 the, 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 the territory the houses we're not going to take it to the grave you see the bible declares that it's appointed unto man to live once and after that judgment jesus spoke to a rich man one day and the rich man said what shall i do to obtain salvation i've observed the law all my life he's been doing religious activities He's been given to the poor. He's been covering the naked. But then Jesus said, if you want to follow me, give all your riches to the poor and come and follow me. The rich man looked at how much possession he possessed that he was grieved because his God was his riches. Not that God needed the riches, but he wanted to disconnect him from the things that he leaned upon so that he would lean upon the true God and his son whom he has sent you see many of us place our hopes our faith in things and these things don't bleed you see these very things did not shed blood for you these very things
cannot give you salvation. These very things cannot reconcile you back to God. Because you see, these very things are the very thing that will separate you from your Creator. You see, many of us wear the crosses on our chest. But with the crosses, we cross to the crack house. With those crosses, we cross to the brothels. But with those crosses, we cross and commit crime. With the crosses, we beat our wives. We commit all kinds of vices in the name or in, uh, in the name of Christ and in the name of a religion. In the name of religion, nations were exploited. Because you see, religion is a tool in the hands of politicians to rule other nations. And today God wants to call South Ave from their religious activities. You see, religious denomination is there to divide and to conquer. But when Jesus came, he didn't come preaching a religion. He says, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, South End. And so Jesus come telling you of a kingdom. Many place their faith in their geographical location they were born. The last time I checked, the geographical location of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did not raise him from the dead. What rose him from the dead was the glory of the Father. It was the Spirit of God that erupted him from his grave. Many have played their faith in the color of their skin, thinking the color of their skin would give them salvation. There is no color, there's no salvation in what color your skin is or what color of your eyes. Because all of us shall stand before God and make account. We shall stand before God and make account of what we did in our bodies. And so today God is calling you step away from religion. Come out from among them. Some are playing their faith because they are part of a religious uh, denomination known as Catholics. You see in the kingdom of God there is nothing like religious denomination. In the kingdom of God we are families. And that is why God sees us as the royals. You become a royal by, by, by becoming born again. We're born into a royal inheritance. God wants to bring us into his royal inheritance. You see, you cannot, you cannot obtain or enter the kingdom by being part of a religious sect. You become part of the kingdom of God by being born again. You see, in John chapter 3, the Bible declares there was a man called Nicodemus. He was a ruler in the synagogue. He, was, he had ties with religion. He practiced religion ever since he was born. But then he comes to Jesus by night. And Jesus said, no, can you enter the kingdom or see the kingdom except you be born again. The power of being born again gives men like yourself and myself the power to see God. Because when Jesus spoke to the religious leader, he says, repent, 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 and be born again, that you may see the kingdom. See, many of us cannot see God or experience God because we don't have the capacity. We don't have the features or the organs that enables us to see the God who is a spirit, the God who dwells in the inapproachable life, the God who is invisible. What makes us see the invisible God is becoming born again. When we become born again, we no longer become sons of men that are damned by the nature of their sins, but we become sons of God that are reconciled back to God and have the Spirit of God dwelling in them. And that is why he said, I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The day Jesus got baptized, the Bible declares that the heavens was opened and the Holy Ghost descended upon him. And the Bible says, the Father said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. By the descending of the Holy Ghost upon us, we become sons of the living God. You see, being baptized in the name of a church or in the name of a religion doesn't give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. What gives us these things is believing in the Lord Jesus. Many believe in their pastors, in their priests. Many confess to the priest but don't confess to God. And today God wants to bring us from our religious times. The last time I checked, many tell me that Jesus was a man that respected religion. We go into our schools, we teach our children respect all religion. But Jesus, me being a disciple of Jesus, Jesus had no respect for other religion. He was living among Sadducees and Pharisees. And every time Jesus encountered them, he began to doubt their sinful actions because their religion was ensnaring the people of Israel. 
talking about religion. Israel is a, is a religious nation. Bound with religious doctrines. But they forgot that religion separates one from God. And that is why he gave us himself. He didn't give us a religion. He gave us Jesus, the son of the living God. The son of the living God which indicates the incarnate God made manifest in the flesh. You see, God was invisible. He's a spirit. He dwells in the approachable life. He comes to a level so men who cannot see God will be able to see God. We can see God because he has historically left residues of his invisibility on the earth so people in South End can have an encounter with God and fellowship with him. Many want to have a religious experience by practicing Buddha, by practicing yoga. We get negative vibes, but these negative vibes are temporal. But you have Jesus today and you have a permanent and a permanent and an eternal experience with God. You see, our yoga practices can only give us a, neg a positive vibe for a moment. But when you have Jesus in your life, you have more than a vibe. You have more than positivity. You have a person in your life that yet though you will walk through the valley of the shadows of death, south end, the Lord and the staff of the great shepherd who is the Lord that will make sure that you will not want will be with you. He says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Have you not heard some end that Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. He that opened the door, I will come in and dine with him. You have a savior that wants to dine with you. You have a savior that wants to be in your life. You have a savior that knows the number of your head. Dave, he said the other day, that what is man, oh God, that I am mindful of him, the son of man, the son of man that I visited him. Have you not heard that the message of God visits us every morning? We woke up this morning in a sinful state, but yet we're breathing. We woke up this morning, not even saying thank you to the Lord, but yet he's giving you everything you need. You woke up without a headache. Some people probably had COVID, but it broke off. Mercy. The Bible says the message of the Lord I knew every morning. See, for God so loved the world that he demonstrated his mercy. By sending his only begotten son to blot out the very sin that separated us from God. You see, God did not send his son to make us good men. And so we try with our own strength to become good citizens. We try with our own strength to become respectful citizens. But you see, our goodness is like filthy rags. Our respect for other religion is like filthy rags. All the things we have achieved have no and has no power to bring us before God. The only thing that gives us audience before the Maker, the Creator, is our faith in Christ. It's in us living our own ways and picking up our crosses. But you see, these days, we put the cross on our chests and our arms and, and these crosses don't kill the flesh. Actually, it's just for fashion and for beauty. But the cross that I come to talk about is a cross that makes you a son of the living God. It's about time the people of South End will cross from being sons of men and become sons of God. Because God brought his sons that the sons of men will become sons of the living God. Is there anybody in South End that wants to hear about the Lord Jesus? How can I help you? Can you shout me out? Shout you out. Yeah, my name is Seth. Seth, God bless you. May God bless you. May you hold over your life be broken in the name of Jesus. Whatever any power of darkness that wants to keep you in bondage of sin, we command you release now in the name of Jesus. Father oh Lord, may your hand rest upon him. May your hand be upon him. May mercy visit him. May he have an encounter. May the goodness of God open his eyes to the love of the great God who dwells in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. People of Southern. God bless you. As well, man. Hallelujah. People of South End, I cannot condemn it. We want to talk about God's love. Many of people feel rejected and dejected from their family. 
They've not found love ever since they were young. But I'm here to tell you of the one true God who loved you. Who has loved you with an everlasting life. You see, I was never good before. As much as I had a Christian name, my Christian name did not bring salvation to my life. I was still being bad. I was committing crimes. You see, when Jesus says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, repentance is not only what you stop doing, but it's what you stop doing and whom you pursue. Because our criminal system has a way of deterring people from committing crime. Someone would say, because they stopped doing things, they have repented. But that's the kind of religious repentance that makes you stop smoking crack, drinking alcohol, masturbating, fornicating, committing idolatry. But when we talk about the repentance of the kingdom of God, it makes you stop what you do and begin to pursue Jesus. You see, the Muslim can repent as well, but their pursuit is for Muhammad. The Hindus or the, the Christians can do it. They depart from the sin, but their pursuit is Baha or Krishna. But today, we talk of the repentance of the kingdom of God. The repentance which is a pursuit for the one true God and his son whom he has sent. Is there anybody here that has stopped smoking weed, stopped drinking, that are lost in themselves? See, when you begin, when I begin to preach this thing, you say, I no longer see my brother on train. But you see, when we stop sinning, we do not love God. Because the first and the greatest commandment is that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and you will love your neighbor as yourself. You see many of us communities like the LGBT say they claim they love God. But that love is not the love of God. Because the moment I begin to talk about the far practices with God hates, they will say I am a hater and not a lover. But the Bible declares that God has given them up to vile affection. That is a lust with a passion. A lust with a passion for the same sex. A lust with a passion for animals. Some practice bestility. Some are pedophiles, which God hates. You see, repentance is hating what God hates and loving what God loves. And that is why God is against all these vices. He says, I've given them up to uncleanliness. I've given them up to reprobate mind. I've given them up to their vile affection. So they have no respect for the natural use of a woman or have the natural use for a man. And so God begins to speak to our generation. He said, this generation is a perfect generation and must repent. And so as I count today, some air bearing this news. It's not with pride. I say it with a broken heart. I say this with tears. I say it with bended knees that every day my prayer is that the United Kingdom will be saved. United Kingdom used to send our missionary to Africa. Some sent our missionary for a, a business agenda. They stand out a nation to exploit nation. And like I said, religion is a tool in the hands of politicians to keep men in bondage. But today God doesn't give us a religion. He gives us his kingdom. He gives us the culture of the kingdom. He gives us the law of the kingdom. He gives us the love of the kingdom. The citizenship that we are in, many think they are Christian because it's a religious title. But you see, Christianity goes beyond a religious title. It's a kingdom citizen. When you are Christian, you are seen as a citizen of the kingdom of God. And you are an ambassador of the kingdom. But now, because we have understand a religious understanding, and number two, because we're falling short of the glory of God, we give these things as being religious, they're being citizens of God. We're no longer ambassadors of the true God. We're ambassadors of self. We're ambassadors of the devil. Our father is the devil. Our image and likeness is of the devil. And today, God wants to change your DNA. Maybe you were born a pedophile. You were born a smoker. You were born a fornicator. You were born a sin. Thank God that you can be born again in faith and in repentance. And so today, people of South End, I'm here to tell you, repent. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is coming again. 
Have you not heard the Bible they say, the Bible declares that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a trump of God, with a voice of an angel, and with a shout. And I'm going to blow the sofa just to tell you how it's going to be when the Lord descends from heaven. Because we're eating the best meal, our diet is good. Many have a good financial life because we have all the money. Many of us have a good spiritual life because we practice yoga, Buddhism, and other religious practices that gives us good vibes, positive energy. We get good thoughts in ourselves and we have a good spiritual life. But we do not have eternal life. You see, eternity is a person. Jesus said the other day in John 17, the verse 3, he said, this is life eternal. This is it. This is it. If you do not know what eternal life is, he said, this is life eternal. That they might know the one true God. Life eternal is the one true God and the son whom he has sent. You see, this life cannot be found in buildings. If you are out here and you know you need this eternal life, so that you can spend eternity in the bosom of the one true God and the Son whom He has sent. Some of, the, of us, if we do not have this life, we'll be spending eternity love dancing with the devil with national teeth, love dancing with devil with pain. Because you see, in hell, no one's name is in there. There's no seat with our name on it. Those seats have the names of demons and the name of the devil. And because our names are not there, we will have to share seats with demons and the devil himself playing musical chairs in agony and pain, love dancing with the devil in pain. And that is why I said we repent and turn away from our drug addiction who will likewise perish. We'll be rolling and tossing. Some of them will be killed because some of us sold drugs to our siblings and they died of drug overdose. I spoke to a brother, he said, Andre, I don't think God will ever forgive me for selling drugs to my sibling. He died of a drug overdose. He died because of my lavish lifestyle to make money out of selling drugs. He was living in guilt. So he spends his day drinking day in and day out. Many are drinking because they're trying to get away from the pain. 
and I can feel your pain today. But I'm here to announce to you there is hope. There is hope because today, if you will call on the name of the Lord Jesus, not on the name of Buddha, Krishna, or power, in whom there is no salvation. And let me make it this clear. The Bible declared there is no salvation in any other. If you are looking for an eternal salvation, which is in Christ alone, the Bible declares there is no salvation in any other. Nor is there any other name. Okay. All right. Nor is there salvation in any other. But in the name of Jesus. And as I come to a close people of South End, that if you call on the name of Jesus, today you too shall be saved. If you call on the name of Jesus, today you too can receive eternal life. It was given to me. It's a free gift. It's true. It's by grace, through faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Yeshua HaMashiach. And today if you admit you're a sinner and you need a savior from the sins you've committed, if, you, if today you admit you're a sinner and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead to save you from your sin, you too can be saved. Today, if you will confess your sin, the Bible declared that if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. My brother, time is short. It's time to repent. And the thing is that you will deny yourself. You will decide to follow Jesus. Many have admitted their sinners believe in Jesus, but demons believe and they tremble. But you believe and you blaspheme God. You believe and you fornicate, you hate God. And you become Darwinist and evolutionist. But today in the name of Jesus, people of heaven, if you will decide to follow him, because Jesus said, if any man should come after me, let him deny himself. Let him pick up his cross and follow me. Today, as I sound the chauffeur with the end and I close this place, Father, I declare over this place, as this seed of your word has been sown, let it bring forth good fruits, 34, 64, 100 fold, in the name of Jesus. Father, let people be set loose from the hands of the devil. Let the hand of the devil over the city dry up and wither. Let the blood of Jesus blot out transgression. Let the heavens open over this place. And Father, let your mercy visit your people. If there be anyone bound, let them be loose. Let the name of the Lord be revealed. Lord, let your goodness these men to repentance. And Lord God, let your love fill this place. Let the angels of the Lord fill this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, we pray. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Say, keep your eyes on South End, pray for South End that they will be saved and receive the Lord Jesus. We're here preaching this gospel, will not stop in the name of Jesus. God bless you, amen. Remember, my dear sister Sarah, who just got baptized today. Pray that the Lord will keep her and hold her strong in Jesus' name. Have a blessed, blessed day in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brother Chino. God bless you, see you soon.